Good morning. Good morning. All praise the Lord, honor be to God. Thank you. I want to thank God those who are here for worship service today. I pray for those on the way. I pray for traveling grace for them. I want to pray God bless on our pastor, Pastor Barry and his wife and family, and our former pastor, Pastor Madison and his wife and family. And I want to pray God bless on you and your family. Amen. Amen. For those who, who can stand, would you please stand for the God, reading of God's will, which is his word. I'll be reading Psalms 150, and it reads, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his firmament of cloud. Praise him with his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with sounds and trumpet. Praise him with cross-trees and harps. Praise him with timbrels and dance. Praise him with strings and harps. Praise him with instruments and organ. Praise him with loud-sounding cymbals. Praise him with high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath. So that everything that has breath. Amen. Let's say amen for St. Mark's praise team coming back on this team. And y'all can do better than that. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and give God the glory this morning. He is so worthy to be praised. He is awesome. He is omnipotent. He is everywhere. And for that, we give him praise. He woke us up this morning. Amen. I might have this little catch in my back, but I tell you what, he is a healer in the name of Jesus. Amen. the Lord and he's the light and salvation amen and we depend on him hey. come on put your hands together there you go Yeah. 
I got a feeling. All right. All right. All right. Everything go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Get you something. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. Say it. Jesus. The told me. All right. Everything is going to be all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't need to hear nothing else. Right. All right. From nobody else. Be all right. This is the time in our service when we would like to acknowledge our visitors. If you are visiting with us today, would you please stand? Show with us your name and where you're from. Our family. Amen. I'd like to share the following announcements with you. Family Vacation Bible School, God's Rock. Solid truth in a world of shifting sands. Romans 12 and 2. Wednesday, June 12th, and Friday, June 14th. Dinner served each day at 6 p.m. Dinner served each day at 6 p.m. Dinner served each day at 6 p.m. Classes each day will be from 6.45 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. June is Brotherhood Month. Amen. The men's ministry would like to share and ask you to save the following dates. Sunday, June 9th, T-shirt and Youth Sunday. The speaker will be our own Reverend Ricky Loftus. Amen. Sunday, June 16th, Dress to Impress Sunday and Father's Day. The speaker will be our own Pastor Lewis and Barry Senior. Amen. Sunday, June 23rd, 39th Annual Men's Ministry Day. Amen. Theme, faith. Forward all issues to him. Amen. Scripture, Hebrews 11 and 1. Guest speaker will be Reverend Ray Hines. Amen. The men's attire, black suit, white shirt, red necktie, and red pocket scarf. Amen. Sunday, June 30th is Casual Sunday. The speaker will be our own Reverend Dem Ramage. Anyone that was affected by the recent storms, FEMA is reimbursing $500 to $700 for household food spoilage and food loss due to power outage. Please call 800-621-3362. Again, that's 800-621-3362. Everyone qualifies regardless of income status. The Pastor's Aid Committee will have a meeting after morning worship service in the conference room in the Ugly Ed Center. Business of importance, that's from Sister Catherine Wright. Amen. We are calling for adult and teen volunteers to coordinate games for Family Vacation Bible School Splash Fun. Please meet Sister Sheila K. Williams in the Fellowship Hall of the Ed Center after church today for this exciting opportunity to serve. We are also asking teachers to attend. Men's ministry will be passing out t-shirts after morning worship in the Disciples All Rush Room. That's from Deacon Ed Young. Thank you. Your kindness meant everything to me. Thanks again. Thank you for all the donations. I appreciate those who contributed to help me reach my goal. For those who didn't get the chance to donate, the portal closes July the 23rd, 2024. Thank you for being a church family I can lean on for help. Love, Riley Page. Amen. I was asked to, if I could, write an original piece just to open up Men's Month. Go ahead. And I wanted to write something that not only could open up Men's Month and take us through the month, but us as St. Mark men could continue to lean on and use as we press forward towards the mark. Men United. In the quiet of dawn where faith finds its birth, gather brothers in fellowship on this sacred earth. For we are warriors of spirit, hearts ablaze with fire, called to rise and conquer to fulfill our divine desire. Let our voices be as thunder, echoing truths untold, as we stand together strong and bold. For in unity we find strength to overcome, in brotherhood our journey has just begun. Amen. With hearts open wide, let us listen and learn, as wisdom's flame within us begins to burn. May our actions speak louder than words alone as we walk the path that Christ has shown. Amen. 
Let us uplift one another in kindness and grace, with love as our armor, steady the pace. All right. For we are called to be beacons in the darkest night, shining for his love, his eternal light. In this brotherhood, let no man stand alone, for together we are stronger than we've ever known. Let this spoken word ignite the flame within, and as we gather in his name, forgiven of all sins. Brothers, arise, let our voices ring, for in Christ we find our everything. In this brotherhood, united as one, we'll journey together until this race is won. And everyone, bless the Lord, bless you. Copyright <laughs> speech. Yeah. It's proud times. You know the Bible says that men should always pray. Yeah, always. But how many of you believe that God always answers our prayer? You know, he may not say yes, and he may just say wait. But the Bible encourages us to pray with confidence, knowing that God will answer our prayers in his perfect will. With every eye closed and every head now, let us go before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, giving thanks and glory unto you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your providential care. We thank you for your provisions. Lord, out of your abundance, you continue to bless us. Out of your love and kindness, you continue to watch over us and care for us in spite of our faults and failures. Lord, we just thank you for all that you do and continue to do in our lives. Lord, without you, we can do nothing. But with you, we can accomplish all things. And Lord, we want to pray for those who are sick of we pray for those who are dealing with the love of a lost loved one. And Lord, we pray for those who are struggling with life in general. Those who are dealing with mental illness. Those who are sleeping under the bridge with no food to eat. Lord, we pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, in our struggles and in our weakness, Lord, we ask that you grant us strength. Strength to continue on this journey. And Lord, when we're down, we ask that you pick us up. For you are God who loves and cares for his children. And Lord, we want to just pray for the St. Mark family. We pray for all those who are under the sound of my voice. Lord, you know what they stand in the need of. We ask right now that you bless in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we want to pray for the preach word on today. Lord, we pray for the man of God who's going to stand and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lift him up, oh God. Prop him up on every side. Give him the strength to continue on this Christian journey. And help us, oh God, to be receptive to his word. Now, Lord, we just ask right now for forgiveness of our sins. And Lord, we, we know that there's some things we've done that we shouldn't have done. We ask, oh God, right now for your forgiveness. Lord, we ask that you take us higher in your service 
Allow your word to go forth in this place. Speak to us, O oh God. Speak to our hearts, for we need to hear from you. Give us a word. A word that will cause us to change our wicked ways. And Lord, we'll forever give you praise and give you glory. We lift you up right now, oh God. We magnify your holy and righteous name. It's in Jesus' name we ask it all. Let the church say amen. 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 amen.
fill it out, put any academic achievements, put any extracurricular achievements, put anything that was um, sports related. If they anything that they were they achieve, it doesn't have to be yeah. in school. Right. A lot of our youth do things outside of school. Yeah. Maybe they do cheer, maybe they do football through AAU or basketball, <laughs> and they achieve something, right. or they finished the year, completed it. Just make sure you highlight the more the merrier. Amen. Yeah. And so, and and we have a section on there. If they are not a youth of our church, but you are, just put down the parent or the guardian or the grandparent of that youth so that we can make sure that we understand who this child is related to. Yeah. Does that make sense? Amen. Yeah. If you have any questions, please reach out to me or Sister Barry. Myself will be able to get that information to you if you need more clarity. Okay. Amen? Amen. All right, I'll have the QR code for you after morning service. Amen. All right, thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Barry. I'm sorry, I can't ignore the queen. Can we sing happy birthday? Sure. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. together here. 
Since June is men's month. Amen. 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 Since, since June is men's month, I, I thought I would get it started. Amen. I thought I would get the men's month celebration started by speaking to our men. Is that all right, ladies? Amen. 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 But as you know, I, I, the message I hope is blended enough. Amen. I hope it's blended enough to where we all can get in yes. on the message as well. But I'm going to speak to our men today as we kick off the men's month. If you have your Bibles, you would get them out and stand with me as I'm going to direct your attention to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 16. And there are just two verses. There are two verses that we want to lift up this morning and will be done. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And I want to read in your hearing verses 13 and 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. If you don't say amen. amen. These are Paul's words to the church at Corinth. Brothers, this is what he says. He says, be on your guard. Yes. Stand firm in the faith. Be men of courage. Be strong. Do everything. In love. Amen. And if I had to put a title to this message today, brothers, it would simply be these words. How to keep our man card. How to keep our man card. Precious, thank you for your service today. Serve as well, and we want to thank you. May be seated, brothers. I came across a project. I came across a project by that was done by a group of women, and they identified thirty-four qualities. This group of women did a project. They identified thirty-four qualities that they thought were man card worthy. Yeah, you know, right? they came across 35, they identified 34, 34 qualities that they thought were man card worthy. And brothers, I just wanted to just throw five of them out there at us and just see which one we fulfill. One of the qualities that these people when they came up with that they thought were man card worthy was that you are not afraid of dirt or sweat. Come on, man. Come on, man. Any in the house not afraid of work? Any brothers in the house that's not afraid of work? You're not afraid of dirt or sweat? Yeah, they said that is a quality that's man card worthy. Yeah, brother not afraid of dirt or sweat. Here's another quality that they came up with. You work on cars. Come on, man. But I trade it. Anybody in the house work on cars? Okay? Yeah, change the battery, change the flat tire, maybe even change the alternator, change the start. I'm still trying to get there. I'm still trying to get there now. Roy, they, they said, yeah, yeah, you, you work on cars is a quality that is man car worthy. Here, here, here's another one. You, you, you got skills on the pit. You got, you got skills. <laughs> brother Crowder, you, you can smoke a mean brisket. You can, <laughs> any brothers in the house know how to smoke a brisket? Amen. What about some baby back ribs? Do I have any brothers that got skills on the pit? Anybody have skills <laughs> on the pit? Yeah, yeah. This group of women said, yeah, if, if you have skills on the pit, that, that's, that's a quality that's man card with. Amen. Here's another one. They say you can drive a stick shift. Yeah, every brother ought to be able to drive a stick shift. Right, right, right. 
Yeah, yeah, every brother, yeah, whether it's four on the floor or three on the on the school in college. So, so you got these 16 older to know about the three on the school. You got to be 16 older to know about the three on the steering column. Yeah, everybody know about the three on the steering column? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If, if you can drive a stick shift, that, that's a quality. That's a quality that is man hard worthy. But here's the last one that I uh, chose to share with us today. You have a man cave filled with man things. Anybody have a man cave in the house today? Yeah, you got a man cave, you got about three or four screens up in the wall. You got the lazy boy chair that's, that's strategically positioned. You got the little stand with your, for the have your remote control, for the TV remote control, for the cable. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody got a man cave? These are five of the 34 qualities that this group of women felt was man card worthy. Mm. But brothers, how many of us know God has a man card? Yeah. 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 Come on. Amen. How many of us know that God has a man card for each of us? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I want to suggest today that on God's man card for us, mm -hmm. there are at least five mandates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are at least five mandates. And they're right here. Mm -hmm. They're right here in the text that we just read. Brothers, if, if, if we want to keep our man card, here's one of the mandates we need to do. We, we, Paul says we need to remain watchful. Because right there in verse 13, he says, be on your God. Am I in the text today? To be, to be on your God is literally means, brother, to be alert. Yes. To be vigilant. Yeah. yeah. To be watchful. And here's the reason why, brothers, we want to remain watchful. It's because what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5, that Satan, our adversary, the devil, right, right. he's on the prowl. Yeah. Yeah. I think Reverend Morgan told us about that last week. That Satan, our adversary, the devil, is on the prowl. Yeah. And he's going around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. And his number one target, brothers, Satan's number one target is the nuclear family. Yeah, you know the nuclear family. The nuclear family is composed of the father, the mother, and their children. And Roy, they are typically live under the same roof. And I know what they Yeah, yeah, yeah. Satan's number one target is the nuclear family. Right. And the reason for that is because he knows as the family goes, yeah. so the society goes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The more functional the family is, the more functional society will be. Yeah. Yeah. And the opposite is true. The more dysfunctional, yeah. hello somebody. Yeah. Right. 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 yeah, yeah. The more hell we raise in the household, yeah. the more dysfunctional yeah. the family is, yeah. guess what? The more dysfunctional society will be. Because see, out of the home, brothers, come all walks of life. See, the policemen of our communities, guess what? They come out of somebody's home. Right, right. The principals of our schools, they come out of somebody's home. And guess what? The next president of the United States. Come on, man. <laughs> Hello, somebody. The next president of the United States would have come out of. Yeah, yeah. See, Satan knows if he can destroy God's original design for the family, he can destroy society. That's right. That's right. And so, brothers, the reason why we need to remain watchful is because Satan, our adversary, is on the prowl. Yeah. And his number one target is the family. Now, he has a threefold strategy. He has a threefold strategy in attacking the family. Can I run through them real quickly? Please. 
One of the strategies that he tries to use to attack the family is to pervert the role that each plays in the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 wants, he wants the husband to play the role of the wife. I wish I had some help with that. He wants the wife to play the role of the husband. And he wants the children to play the role of the parents. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, 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 he wants the husband to be the follower, the wife to be the leader, and the kids tell everybody else what to do. But how many of us know the devil is going to lie? The devil is a lie, and the truth ain't in him. But that is his strategy. That's up. His focus is on the nuclear family. Mm -hmm. And he knows that I can turn things upside down yeah. in the home, right. the society would be the same yeah. way. Right. Yeah. So he tries to pervert the roles that each plays in the family. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, you know what else he tries to do? Yeah. He tries to create an identity crisis with our children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 he wants he, he boys thinking they're girls. I came prepared to preach, y'all. Come on, preach it. He, he, he want girls thinking they boys. To the point where, to the point where they don't want to be called with nouns and pronouns. Yeah, they, they don't want to be referred to as a male or a female, a boy or a girl, a he or a she. But then, what you want us to call you, other? Y'all miss that. But what is other? Anything other than male, anything other than female, anything other than he, anything other than she, anything other than boy, anything other than girl. Yeah, he tries to create an identity crisis in the minds of our children. To the point where our children don't know who they are. And so when they grow up and become adults, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? So if he can't pervert the roles that we play, if he can't confuse our children, then what he does is he attacks the family with debt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Instead of the heads, the leaders of the family, the, the spouses of the family, instead of them being content with delayed gratification, yes, yes. coupled with the willingness to roll their sleeves up and put some sweat equity in. Yeah. Yeah. They fall prey yeah. to immediate gratification. Yeah. Yeah. Even at the expense of maxing out our credit cards. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the top three causes for divorce today, once you get past how we're going to raise our children, yeah. once we get past of how much sex we're going to have or how little sex we're going to have, yeah. <laughs> the next issue is the money. Right, right. Because how many of us know with our finances there's no romance, right? <laughs> finance without right. yeah. romance, romance without finance is a nuisance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 no money. No. <laughs> I wish I had some help for the day. Please, Pastor Bill, I'm trying. I'm trying my best. I'm trying. My best brothers, all I'm trying to say is we need to keep on doing what we're doing. We need to keep, we need to keep being watchful. Yes. Brothers, we need to stay on God. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we need to stay on God because our adversary, yes, sir. the devil, he's on the prowl, and that brother is coming with full force. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, so brothers, we need to remain. <laughs> Watchful. If we want to keep our man card, we want to keep our man card. Can I also suggest this? We need to remain faithful. Yes. Yes. Right here, right here. Not only did Paul says be strong, he says stand firm yes. in the faith. Yes. But I think it's worth noting there is a difference between faith and the faith. Uh -huh. Paul says stand firm in the faith. Yes. I think there's a difference that's worth noting between faith and the the faith. Faith is the act of believing. Yeah. <laughs> believing in something. The faith is what we believe in. Yeah. 
And what are we believing in? What the Word of God has to say. What the Word teaches. The principles in the Bible. The precepts in the Bible. The promises in the Bible. The prophecies in the Bible. These are the things we believe in. That's the faith. We want to stand firm, Paul says, in the faith. The teachings of God's Word. We have to stand firm in what the Word of God says. And not with some influencer on social media has to say. Right, 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 right. We want to stand firm, brother, in what the word of God says and not some sports personality on ESPN. Right, right, right. We want to stand firm in the word. That's right. That's right. Because there's a lot of lying and a lot of lies that are going on. And the only antidote to a lie is the truth. Are y'all with me today? Truth, lie, a lie cannot stand in the presence of truth. But truth can stand in the presence. You want, you want to get a lie up out of your way, put the truth on the truth. You want to get the lie up off of you, put the truth on it. Am I making any sense so far? Yes, sir. Brothers, if we want to keep our man called, we need to remain yes, sir. watchful. Can I get an amen? amen? We also want to remain faithful. But the text tells us, too, we want to remain manful. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, Pastor. Pastor Barry, is that a word? Yeah, it's a word. <laughs> M-A-N-F-U-L. <laughs> we want to remain manful. Because what did Paul say here in our text? Be men of courage. Now when you go home and you look at the New American Standard Version of this command, it says act like men. <laughs> Paul is telling us, brothers, act like men. Yeah. We're going to continue to act like men. How do men act? <clears throat> One of the ways men act <coughs> is that they are matured in their thinking. <coughs> but when you get a chance, go home and read chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians, where you see where Paul says, Brethren, don't think like babies. He said, Instead, think like mature men. Yeah, we, 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 we want to act like men. Men are mature in their thinking. Now, brothers, there is a time in all of our lives, there does come a time in all of our lives when we accept Christ where it is okay to be a babe in Christ. When we all come into the faith, we all are born again into the faith as babes in Christ. So there is a time in all of our lives where it's okay, it's cool to be a babe in Christ. Because we are born again, we have been newly born into the family. But there comes a time though, brothers. Five years down the road, ten years down the road, where we have to move from being babes in Christ to being men of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there, there should come a time in all of our lives where once we've been born again and we have walked with the Lord for a while, that we start being men of God. Can I get a witness here today? Yeah, yeah. So there's nothing to be ashamed of to be a babe in Christ if you've been born into the family, recently born into the family. But over time, five years from now, ten years from now, you, you, you can't claim I'm a babe in Christ. No, no, we, we are men. We are men of God. How do men act? Not only are they matured in their thinking, but they are courageous. Yeah. Hey, when you get home and you get a chance, go home and read Joshua chapter 1. When Joshua was getting ready, when Joshua was contemplating dividing and conquering the promised land, in Joshua chapter 1, God reminded Joshua. He had to remind Joshua four times to be courageous. Because check this out, brothers, check this out. What Joshua was being called to do, he, 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 it was a tall order. 
Yeah, it was a tall order what God had called Joshua to do. Because the, the, the land that he was going to divide and conquer, it had some people over there. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Not only did it have people, it had some nations over there. Right. Not only did it have, it had some giants yeah. over there. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, over in the promised land, there were some Amorites over there. Yeah. Do I have any Bible students that I'm talking about? Yeah. There were some Canaanites over there. There were some Gershites over there. There were some Hittites over there. Some Hittites that was over there. Some, some Jebusites over there. Some Parasites. Did I miss an act? It, it was some strong nations over in the promised land. Yes, the land was promised, but it still had to be possessed. And it couldn't take no coward to get the job done. So God had to remind Joshua, you will have to have courage to do what I call you to do. Brother, all I'm trying to say is, even today, there are enemies of the faith. And they're coming after of us. And we're going to have to have courage to stand up against them. Brothers, how many of us know you can't be a Christian and a coward? How many of us know that? You know these brothers on the street coming talking about how hard they are? Yeah. Try being a faithful Christian. I ain't tell me that ain't hard. Yeah. Yeah. Try being a faithful Christian and tell me if that doesn't take courage. Yeah. Yeah. Turning the other cheek. Yeah. Walking into the lion's den. Yeah. Going and being thrown into the fire and furnace. Does that not take courage? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, some of these brothers on the street talking about how hard they are. Let them face the lion's den. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Let them face never check Nazareth's fire referrals. Yeah. They ain't come back and holler at me. Yeah. 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 The reason why those brothers went in, they were men of courage. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why Joshua was able to go over into the promised land and take possession of it, it required courage. And brothers, all I'm saying is we want to continue to remain. Yes, sir. Manful. Because it's going to take that. Yeah. 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 It's going to take that. But not only do we need to remain Watchful, faithful, manful. But can I also suggest we need to remain powerful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul says, be strong. Yeah. Now, how am I doing on time? Yeah. To be strong doesn't mean, brothers, how much we can bench press. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we got to be. Yeah. Kevin. To, to be strong doesn't mean how much we can bench press. Yeah, it, it ain't about us being able to lift 250. Amen. And Kevin, 10 reps of 250. That's not kind of strong Paul is talking about. Right, right, right. Now, let me say, it ain't nothing wrong, brothers, with being physically fit. Right, right, right. Do, do I have a witness here? Amen. If there's nothing wrong with being able to snatch 250 yeah. 10 times. Yeah. Now, now, Pastor Bill ain't there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Barry ain't there yet. Oh, but I'm on my way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't saying there's anything wrong with being able to snatch 250 and pump it 10 reps. Yeah. The reason why it's nothing wrong with being physically fit. Come on now. It's because whatever work God has assigned us to do. Come on now. It's going to require our help. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Whatever God has assigned us to do, it's going to require help. Yeah. Yeah. yeah without help, I couldn't be up here today. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Without help, you couldn't serve today. Yeah. Yeah. It, it requires help. So yes, we want to be physically fit. But to be strong, it's not about being physically fit. Amen. But spiritually strong. That's right. Man. Out of all the five mandates here in these two verses that we have read, out of all the five mandates, this one here is the only one that's in the passive voice. Yeah. You know, whenever you parse a verb, you have different uh, categories of the verb that you're parsing. You have the tense, yeah. past, present tense. Yeah. You have the number, is it singular, plural? Yeah. You have the mood, is it, is it imperative? Mm -hmm. And then you, you have the voice. You have the voice. Is it active or is it passive? And this is the only one of the five that's in the passive <coughs> voice. What does that mean, Pastor Bill? This means that the strength 
The source of our strength doesn't come from us. Right, right. That's what Paul is saying. This strength that I'm talking about, it doesn't come from us, bro. This strength that Paul is talking about comes from That's why he says in Ephesians chapter 6, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his Brothers, the reason why some brothers today are walking around and they're not being victorious. They're not victorious as husbands. They're not victorious as fathers. They're not victorious in their finances. They're not victorious in their careers. The reason why some brothers are not victorious today is because they're not connected to the right power source. It's when we connect to the eternal power source that things start jumping up. It is then I start being victorious as a person. Yeah. It is then I start being victorious as a father. Right. It is then that I start being victorious in my finances, mm -hmm. in my career. Mm -hmm. I start taking over more and more territory because I got the Lord on my side. Yeah. 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 It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, so brothers. If we want to keep our man card, we need to remain faithful. Yes, sir. Amen. But last but not least, can I also suggest this? We need to be remain mindful. Yeah. Yeah. Mindful of what? Verse 14 says, to do everything in love. Mm. Come on, let's get it. Let's get it. We want to be mindful to do whatever it is that God has called us to do. It, it needs to be saturated, yeah. marinated yes. <laughs> in love. Yes. As one preacher said, contrary to popular belief, brother, it is manly to be loving. Yes. Right. Amen. Absolutely. I know oftentimes as brothers, we feel that a real bruh, a real bruh, <laughs> uh, we feel a real bruh don't, don't, have, don't have no emotions. A real bruh uh, got a week for a brother showing the kind of, in the kind of love. Right? But the text tells us, sure, everything we do, brothers, yeah. is to be done in, yeah. am I in the text? No. Yeah. So you know what that means, brothers? When it comes to our duties as husbands, when it comes to our duties as fathers, when it comes to our duties as uncles, as nephews, as brothers of our sisters, when it comes to our duties as being cousins, when it comes to our duties as being leaders in this church, we are to do it in love. In love. Here's the dynamic that love brings into the equation. Because of love, brothers, not only can we be courageous, but also compassionate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Because of love, not only can we be strong, but also sensitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because of love, not only can we be tough as nails, mm -hmm. but also tender. Yes. Uh -huh. it sounds for me. Paul says. We are to do everything in love. As I close, brothers, as I close, I, according to the Urban Dictionary, according to the Urban Dictionary, the phrase, turning your man card, yeah, the phrase, turn in your man card, is an instructional phrase that one male gives to another male. When he sees that that male has clearly lost all semblance of manhood. Yeah, only brother can go to another brother and say, man, you can turn your man card. But brothers, how do us know today we're not gonna have to turn our man card in? 
I know brothers in the house today, but we're not going to have a turn out in the party. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because we're going to remain watchful. Yeah. We're going to remain faithful. Yeah. We're going to remain manful. Yeah. We're going to remain powerful. Yeah. And we're going to remain mindful. Yeah. Yeah. How to keep your man called. And true to the word of God. It's good. It's good. The doors of the church are open to have been for more than 2,000 years. We, we're not going to take for granted that everybody in the house no longer can trust that that's the case. But if not, we want to extend to you the free gift of salvation. The hard part has already been done. Jesus yes, sir. on Calvary. Yes, sir. He was nailed to the cross for our sins. Yeah. Yes. He died. He was buried. Yeah. Yes. But he rose again, signifying that he satisfied God's wrath on sin. Signifying the debt had been paid. Now all we have to do is just receive, accept. God's free gift of salvation. And we want to extend to anybody in the house who may not have done that yet, but you want to today. We have brothers who are strategically positioned to assist you with this time of decision. And if you're that person, why don't you come? Or perhaps you've already accepted Christ. You don't have a church home. And you can find St. Mark to be that place. If you want to of those individuals, as a musician, play you can come.
this evening. We pray your blessings upon both in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. Amen.